everyone, welcome back to Just Finish Coding. This is part two of our Endless Planet Simulator, so let's get coding. Just finished coding. Now, quick interjection here. This is part two of the series, and we're picking up from where we left off at part one. And if you've not checked out part one so far, please make sure you do check it out, and I'll leave a card right here. Now, in case you have checked out part one, your simulation is going to look something like this. So when you hit the green flag, the earth moves around the sun at a pretty slow pace and we could actually fix that, but it pretty much simulates a nice uh, revolving motion. Now in case we want to enhance this, what we can do is we could just um, increase the cha uh, change theta by, and I'm just going to make it uh, 2 instead so that that's going to be um, double the speed. Now you could customize this based on your computer speed and um, what actually suits you the best. So I'm going to leave that um, up to you guys. Alright, so now these variables are a little bit annoying. So the next thing I'm going to do is to actually hide all of them since they are all working and we really don't have any kind of box. So make sure you uncheck all those boxes right there. And now after this, what you want to do is to change the backdrop. And you could do this by just clicking on choose a backdrop. And now you'd have this bunch of backdrops that actually show up. And what you'd want to uh, do is to click the space category and then you'd see this backdrop called stars um, load up and you just want to click on that and you should have a nice stars background all set up. Now once you're done with the setting up of the stars background, uh, the next thing that's left is actually the moon sprite. Now we don't have to um, program the moon sprite uh, from all the starting blocks of code and the way we can shorten this process is by actually duplicating the earth sprite and then we're just going to go to the costume of the earth sprite uh, earth 2 sprite in this case and we're just going to delete it and instead just put in a simple circle okay so i'm just going to delete that and now i'm going to uh, click draw circle and uh, i'm going to set the saturation to be zero and we should have a pretty nice circle here. So make sure you hold your shift key when you are drawing your circle and this would actually give you a nice smooth circle right there. So I think that's actually a bit proportional to the moon size. Um, the thing worked out pretty well for me. But you might want to do some size adjusting with uh, respect to the moon there. So just you know play with the sizes until you get a size which is kind of what you want. Alright, so once you're done with that, I'm actually going to rename this costume to be Moon and I'm also going to rename the um, sprite to be Moon as well and uh, this is going to make uh, things a little bit clearer. Now obviously if we have the exact same thing, the Moon would just be on the Earth sprite and this is not what we want. Now in case we want the Moon to actually revolve around the Earth, then there are a few more things that we actually have to initialize. Now I'm going to initialize all the variables first and uh, explain what they do right after I do that. Now the first variable I'm going to initialize is going to be called moon x and it's going to be very similar to the uh, um, earth sprite. Okay, so moon x. Now I'm going to have moon y. Uh, after this I'm going to make a variable which is going to be called theta2 and this is going to be equivalent to the theta for the earth but instead it's going to be holding the a moon right there. Alright, so now I'm going to set up another variable called moon distance and uh, this is going to hold a similar value when compared to the earth distance. Alright, there we are. Now let's actually customize this code a bit. So right click on all your variables and you want to change all of them into the new variables we created. So you want to set theta2 to be 0, you want to set the earth distance to be the moon distance and you want to change that uh, number right there obviously but I'm going to do that a bit later. So now you can uh, right click on all your variables and actually change them into the variables you want and uh, I'm just going to do that really quick. So you want to change earth x to moon x and earth y to moon y and obviously change all the earth distances to the moon distances and wherever you see theta you want to change it to the um, theta 2. All right, here we are. And last, you want to change Earth X and Earth Y to Moon X and Moon Y. And there's actually a fix that we need to do right here, but I'll not do it right now. Okay, so we have changed Theta by 2, and that's another thing that we will change in order to make our simulation a bit more proportional to how it is real life. All right, 
So now we have all the setup and like I said, we need to change the moon distance first. So I'm going to set it to about 30 and now you want to see how that actually works and I think that's a pretty good distance from the Earth. Now obviously this is not our complete simulation, this is not what we're going to do. We're actually going to change this and make it a lot better. Okay, so now you want to make sure that the moon actually revolves around the Earth and does not just sit and revolve around the sun inside the sun and that's really really weird. So what we'll do is right here in our go to's we want to remove these two variables and instead grab two plus operators okay and you want to put them inside those go to x and y coordinates and now you want to head over to your variables and grab the earth x and earth y variables and you want to put them right there okay and um, I know I've not uh, explained what these variables hold, but bear with me right there. I'll do it in a minute. Okay, so now you want to test it out. And now you can see that the moon actually is revolving around the Earth. Obviously, the distance isn't sufficient, but it is revolving. And now let me actually explain um, the code right here and how it actually works. So it's very, very similar to our Earth Sprite. But instead of actually holding the value to our Earth Sprite, um, the moons uh, to our sun sprite, the moon sprite actually reverses it and instead holds all its values with respect to the earth sprite. Now it's constantly going to be revolving around the earth just like the earth is revolving around the sun. So it's kind of like imagining what would happen if the sun itself were rotating, or uh, I'm sorry, revolving around another object. Okay. So the theta 2 is going to be the angle between the moon and the earth. Now if you do not understand this, make sure you go back to part 1 and actually check out the part where I explain all these variables. They're going to be holding the exact same values except with respect to the earth and not with respect to the sun. So theta 2, like I said, is the angle between the moon and the earth. Uh, moon x is going to hold the coordinate of moon x away from the earth and the reason we go to Earth X plus Moon X is because we um, don't want to just go it with respect to the Sun, right? We also want to move it away from the Earth. So initially, we have the distance the Earth is away from the Sun and then the distance the Moon is away from the Earth in order to get the complete picture. And uh, similarly with Moon Y, we basically just um, reverse the value and actually set it on the current Y position with respect to the earth and then we need to add the distance the earth is away from the sun in order to actually get a proper working simulation. Now I'm also going to change theta by 24 and not 2 and that is because if you actually think about how fast the moon revolves around the earth and how fast the earth revolves around the sun, the earth takes about a year to revolve around the sun and the moon takes about a month to revolve around the earth. So you want to make sure that they are always in a 1 is to 12 ratio. So here in our earth sprite we had changed theta by 2 and in our moon sprite we have changed theta by 24. Now if you want the program to actually go faster, what you'd have to do is to change theta by 3 and change um, theta 2 by 36 and you could also customize that you know into decimal points and you could go more and more precise but this is the general idea. So I'm also going to increase the moon distance because the moon was almost colliding with the earth right here and whoa that's way too fast but that is actually how the moon revolves around how fast the moon revolves around the earth when you compare it to um, the sun. So I'm going to increase the moon distance even more to about 55 so that it's not touching the earth at any spot. Now this is very very fast and we don't want it to go this fast so I'm going to set it back to 1 is to 12 and uh, you could actually uh, customize this the way you want. Now obviously as you can see here the moon actually is uh, colliding into the sun and this is not a good thing. So what I'm going to do for the sun is I'm just going to set the size to be about 100 and I know I made it bigger early on but I think it's yeah it's better now. Now obviously the um, distances aren't set to scale. But this does match a pretty good simulation with the moon revolving around the earth and the earth in turn revolving around the sun. So the last touch up you might want to do is to hide all these variables right here and right here with that you have a nice working simulation. And all you have to do is to hit Ctrl S so that you don't lose the project and you are ready to go with an endless solar uh, system simulator. So that's it. We have a perfectly working program. Now in case you watched this video this far, there are two more videos that I want you to check out. Now the first one is uh, where we make a projectile simulator 
and in this case we actually simulate a projectile as opposed to our solar system so we'd have customized initial velocity um, uh, customized gravity and we'd also be displaying the time that it takes for the projectile to actually hit the ground so I'll be linking both uh, the videos right here make sure you check out that card right now the second video that I'm gonna link up right here is gonna be where we make an infinite prime number generator now this thing would give you a bit of idea a bit of an idea on how uh, we can actually use scratch to generate prime numbers and we could go on and on and on until your computer actually can't take it anymore and I'll be linking to that as well so make sure you check out those two videos also if you're new here or you've been watching my content for some time make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so that you're notified about all our future releases uh, because we upload videos on a day-to-day -day basis and there's a lot more content coming up so make sure you do those two things and also check out the videos um, thanks for watching everyone i'll see you in the next video bye bye